us and the words that he's put in my mouth is not going to depart from your mouth nor the mouth of your children nor the mouth of your children's children or any of their descendants from here on and forevermore what are you called to do you're gonna be a voice you're gonna be a voice young lady you see up. You've had my attention all morning. The Lord says you know what is on the inside of you. And you've just begun to have that nursing thing come on you. That's the nurturing side of you that God has called you to be and to do. And the Lord said you're going to see people through different eyes. I watched it. I'm going to send you what it is. I don't remember the name right now. But I watched this, this movie about this lady who was really tricked by her husband <laughs> into going into Africa he, he was like oh just come she was a nurse they weren't married yet just come and I'll give you an opportunity for one year and she went and then she got around the people and the heart of God began to burn inside of her and then he said you need to marry me and she's like what is up with this one year and he said, you need to join me in changing these people's life and securing their future. They're going to die without you. And the Lord is saying to you, Missy, they are going to die without you. They are going to die. He's put a mandate upon your life and you know it. And you are coming alive on the inside and you're not going to be able to stand in the background and smile anymore and get away with it because the mandate he has on your life is in the forefront of what he is calling the church to do and be. And that is to be a nurturer to those that are dying and those that are lost and those that have no hope. And the Lord says you can do that now. You don't wait until you get sent off into some other place you are that light you are that powerful woman of God that he has talked to you about since the time before you were even born and the Lord says I'm bringing that anointing and you know the anointing of this house you have lived in this house you have grown up in this house and you have desired the anointing of this house and the Lord said it is yours if you want it it is yours. The same spirit that he's put inside of me, the same words that he's put inside of my mouth, he is putting inside of your mouth. Oh. And in, them, and in the mouth of your descendants or both natural and spiritual or in the mirror the Lord says dare dare to dream with me dare to dream with me let me in let me in dream my dreams with me dream my dreams with me there's so many faces there's so many people don't diminish me don't allow me to be diminished so in the name of Jesus I stir up all of those things that God has spoken over you and I add to it the anointing of this day you are anointed and appointed and called you will walk in a prophetic voice you will speak truth and you will change lives and you will love them you will love them and they won't resist him they will not be able to resist him because it is magnified through you to a degree they cannot resist this is your portion this is your life this is what brings you breath anything else leaves you stagnant and unfulfilled that's why you get frustrated because you're not walking in the fullness of it yet oh but you are going to because the same way when my my family says something to me that is ridiculous and I say oh it ain't happening 
You just shut up and quit agreeing with the enemy right now. Just light up right now. No matter what happens, I am going to fight for them. And you are my family. You understand that? You're going to do exactly what God asked you to do. Because we're not having anything else. Amen? Amen. Don't laugh. It's you too. <sighs> Where is your daughter? Yep. This is not going to depart from your mouth, nor the mouth of your descendants, nor the mouth of your descendants' descendants, here and now and forevermore. You see, God did not call us to be a church so that we could affect a few people and then be gone. He said he has called us to be a voice in the center of the city of Davy so he could turn it into the city of David where David had a heart that was a little bit different, you understand. You see, Moses had a call. Moses' call was to get the people out, get the people moving, get them out of bondage, convince them they're no longer slaves, get them out of Egypt where they couldn't even get out of their own way. And so Moses did what God called him to do. Moses went and he got the people and he said, okay, and he did all kinds of signs and all kinds of wonders and we're happy for Moses. And Moses had a heart to do what he needed to do to get the people out. But David, David was a little bit different because David knew what a mess he was. And David said, oh Lord, oh Lord God, would please don't take your spirit from me. He had a heart that was going to obey God no matter what the cost. He figured it out. He figured out that no matter what mess he had made, his God was big enough. His God was good. He was going to proclaim it as good. But he just didn't want to get the people out of bondage. He wanted to get them into the presence. Oh, Jesus. You see, there's a difference in the heart of David and the heart of Moses. Moses went to God and got everything they needed. But he didn't insist on the people having the presence. He just got as much as he needed for all of them. Oh, but David. David said, oh no, no, there's something more. I want you to know how I love him. I want you to know how he loves you. you I don't want you to be bystanders on the outside. I don't want you outside looking in. I want you in looking up. I want you one on one with him. You see, there's something bigger. There's something greater. There's something that is so magnificent when you come to know him one-on-one -on -one and you recognize who he is and what he wants to do in your life then you become a part of bringing something alive on earth and David walked right in to the throne room of God and snatched embracing and displaying and sharing God's love and said it's gonna happen right here right now without permission he said I'm gonna build something right here I'm gonna go get the presence of God I'm gonna go gather the presence of God and I'm gonna get a bunch of radical people who are gonna join me and we're gonna go and we are going to cause some synergy to happen we are gonna cause a happening to happen we are going to cause a a worship service that will never end we are going to come into the place where there's going to be people that are so hungry for God to know Him like I know Him. So in love with Him because He is the most wonderful thing that ever happened to them in their whole life. And they can't stop praising His name. They, they just can't stop shouting. They just can't stop playing their instruments. They can't stop because they are doing something different. They are going to prophetically sing. They are going to get revelation about who I am. And they are going to begin to sing it out. Out. not from words that somebody else has written but from words that come from the inside of the fire that's burning in their heart for them to display and to share who he is from experience 
They are not going to play on their instruments some kind of form of notes that they're reading. Not that they, they're going to grab a hold of the stones of heaven and they are going to bring it down to earth and they are going to prophetically play. And he demanded that it be so. He said, okay, here, I'm calling you and you and you and you and you are going to worship. You're going to worship 24 hours. You are not going to stop. He deserves our praise and we are going to have a place of praise. And then he said, you, 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 and you, you are going to prophesy on your instruments. And that means you're going to get out of the natural. You are going to get into the supernatural. You are going to get into his presence. And you're going to shut your eyes and sounds are going to come out of you. Not sounds that you learned from watching somebody else's video. Just saying. Sounds that come through you. Wish I had an instrument to play. And that's why I had you brought in here. Because I saw you tapping on a drum. And I saw you playing before the Lord. And you didn't even choose this for yourself. You're just like, this is the last thing I want to do. But God has other plans for you. You see, your heart has told on yourself. You have a heart after God. You have a heart after his word. And you have a heart after this house. You see, you have come in under the anointing of a prophet. And now you are sunk. It is too late for you. You ain't getting out. The Lord said, when you were up there playing on your instrument the other night, which you wish wasn't, he showed me that you are going to Beat those drums to a prophetic sound that is going to destroy the tactics of the many for your generation and others. And the Lord said, you, you just, you know, you want to be normal. It's too late for all of that. It's just too late. And he said, you're never, you're going to shine. You're going to shine with the glory of the Lord because you've been with him. And the Lord said, the times that you, you don't need, you know, you know, I understand. Listen, I was raised in a Christian home. They drove me crazy. For real. You know, we went to church every time the doors were open. It was not optional to me. Uh, they, they, they taught me all kinds of stuff. Like, like hello, you're, you will go and be in the quiz team. Yes, you will. You will study that word. You will memorize it. You will do this. Beep, 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 beep. Okay? You will be in the choir. Me in the choir. Are you kidding me? Okay? When I was a little girl, you were going to be at every play. You were going to be at the front. You were, I'm like, holy schmoly people, back off. And that is how you feel. Like, for the love of God, this may be your call, but leave me alone. Okay, normal. Totally normal. However, not acceptable. Because God has made you in his image and in his likeness to be a warrior princess. And so you can just go ahead and put the crown on because it ain't coming off. And you are going to war until other people come into his kingdom. Amen? Amen. It's a good thing. I was happy in the end for my parents to be so abnormal because they said, it's not optional for you to love God. You will love God. I'm like, okay. I, like, I didn't have too much of a choice, I thought. I tried it. I backslid for whatever, 10 months. Don't make fun of me. And it was horrible. Don't like sin. Figured that out. Sin sucks. Whoop, now I said that on tape. It does. It has nothing of value to offer you. I got news for you. Oh, here it is. There it is. Okay. So, the other thing God said to me, geez, was this. Do you remember when, here's Jesus. He's, he is like, he is recognizing the moment of time he's in. And he says, all right, I want you guys to go get some bread, get some wine, you know, I'm gonna have this little upper room experience here. 
So he called all his disciples together and he's like, listen, the time has come. I'm going to go die. They're going to nail me on a cross. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do everything that I came here to do. And it's time for me to do that. And his disciples were like, oh, no, you can't do that. We love you. No. They said, oh, who's going to sit next to you? And he's like, what? Like, I spent all this time with you buffoons, and this is what I get? You know, like, what in the world? <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. He's like, he, he goes, listen, I, when he heard what they were doing, he just said, okay, let me give you a clue here. Get out of yourself. You selfish bunch of crazy lunatics. You've got to get this down. Because you're about ready to be assigned to change the world. You see, I am leaving. But I am not leaving without giving you what you need. And here is what you need. You need to stop thinking about you. Oh. He's like, you have to understand something. You want to be high? Go low. You want to be king? Fine. Be king, servant. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? How am I going to enjoy my life? When you're in obedience to Almighty God, following what He called you to do, that's the biggest fun you could ever have. And until you get to the point where you surrender to that, you are in a problem. So now, you know, they've had this little discussion and they're like, oh, we're in trouble with Jesus himself. Like, okay, we're going to get our hearts straightened out. And so they're trying, to, they're trying to get it all together. And he says this. He goes, I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me. Do you know who you are? Are you disciples of the Most High God? Okay. He has appointed unto you a kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying here today? We have a king. We have a king that rules from on high. And he has appointed unto you a kingdom. That means you have to follow the king. That means you have to be aware of who he is and be in his image and be in his likeness. You've got to follow the king and the way his kingdom works. And the way his kingdom works is an upside down kingdom. And so he's, he's trying to put everything in order and to give them the proper perspective. Come out from amongst the world, people. Church of the living God. You, you're not going to do this out on your own independently away from a church body. You're going to fall on your face. You could even backslide. Don't think, why did he create the body of Christ in the first place? Independent spirits, they got to go. In the name of Jesus, just stop. If you don't recognize that you have an independent spirit, just ask him. He'll tell you. Oh. He says, you know, you're important. You're going to sit down in my kingdom with me side by side. He goes, I've appointed you. I've anointed you. I've got a call on you. You people at Liberty, you've got a call on your life. If you belong here, it's bigger than you think. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you know, Peter. All of a sudden, Peter. You know how that goes. So Jesus is like explaining all this to them, and all of a sudden, this is what happens. I won't look at anybody so you don't get condemned. And he goes over and he goes, Simon! <laughs> Simon, Simon. He goes back to his natural name. Because he's going back to being the son of his natural father instead of being the son of Jesus. And he goes, Simon, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. And when you return, then strengthen your brother. 
And Jesus is like not mad at Peter, but he's just like warning him. He's like, you are going to have the, you are going to deny me out of your mouth. You're saying, I'm going to follow you forever. You can count on me, Jesus. I am yours. I am yours. Just like we all do when we get in church. I'm yours. I'm yours. And then we walk out the door and we go, I'm mine. I'm mine. I'll do what I want. I'll do what I feel. I'll go where I want to go. And Jesus is like, you're fearing man. You're caring about what people think. You're worried about yourself. Well, what if they hang me? Well, what if they crucify me? Well, what if they do to me what I see them doing to you? I'm not into all that. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. He didn't say, okay, be a Christian on Sunday. It'll be fine. He didn't say, okay, raise your hands, worship me whenever it's convenient to do so. He said, every day you get up, you go get your cross, you recognize what I've done for you. You you recognize my shed blood on that cross. You find out what I have done for you. You let it be a revelation to the inside of you and you go out those doors with gratefulness and you represent me properly. You take up that cross and you come to the point where you don't care what man can do to you because you have God's approval. And until you get to that point, you are in trouble because the enemy would like to sift you as wheat. You know what happens when they sift you as wheat? There you go. To a million pieces all over. You just get broken up and you become unimportant and you become disjointed. Jesus didn't come so he could have a bunch of hurting, disjointed people for the love of God. He came so that you and I could have an anointing. And he sets you on purpose in a place that is blessed by God. To know that being able to know him and to embrace him is the first priority of our life. If I could, uh, can't though. The only way, the only way you can come to the place of knowing him that way in intimacy is to know him in that place of intimacy. God knows if someone else could drag you there, you could have been dragged by now. We have the best teachers right now in the world. They are everywhere. You can click on them at any time. We have the best ministers everywhere. I mean, you want to get in the spirit of God. I'm not saying I'm the best of anything. I'm just saying they're everywhere. However, if you're called here, I better be your best. Because God chose you to be here on purpose. It is not that we are missing information. We live in an information world. We have information at the touch of a button all the time. Here's what we're missing. Communion. Mm, Jesus. You know, it's easy to serve God when everything's going right. Easy. Easy. He's so good. He is good, good, good all the time. He's good. And so we get off into, yeah, he's good. He's, he's so good. And it's easy to say it when all everything is good. But then, then your body acts up. Kids act up, your husband acts up, your wife acts up, your boss acts up, your your money just disappears out of your checking account. People are just acting up, people are talking nasty about you, lying, leaving, abandoning, hurting, and depression comes. 
You're not worth anything. Well, that is not what we put up with here in this house. Shut up, Satan. You just shut up, Satan. We are the healed, the delivered, the whole, the redeemed, the prospering people of God. And we are not going to walk around with our heads down trying to explain to other people why things aren't happening for us. It may not have occurred yet in your life, but it has occurred on the cross 2,000 years ago. And what he has provided for us, we are partakers of, and we will have nothing less than that. Because that is who he said we were. We have to open our mouth and speak to the mountain. Until we speak to the mountain, it's just going to keep standing right there. Going, I ain't moving. I ain't changing. Nothing's happening. Oh, look at the mountain. Oh, look at the mountain. Oh, look at the mountain. You need to be going, mountain, I see you. But now here's, I got news for you, mountain. You're going to be moved right out of from in front of me over there into the sea where you're going to sink into the ocean and never come back again. Because that is who our God is. We say, oh, there's nothing impossible with God. Well, then get in agreement with him. Who, who's going to do it if you don't? Well, I need you to cast that mountain into the sea. I will, first few times. Then I'm going to teach you how to do it, and then you better do it. Because you can't survive on somebody else's anointing. You can learn from somebody else's anointing. You can learn from somebody else's presence. You can learn from somebody else's sacrifice. But you think you can get by in your life on my sacrifice, or my anointing, or my presence? Forget it. You're going to fall. I don't have enough to carry everybody. I have to go back and get refilled myself. Are you kidding me? You think I live in some kind of bubble? Bubble of trouble. I just decide. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I know what you said, Lord. You said that we are to bring freedom to other people. You said that you came to set the captives free. You said, I'm going to open up prison doors. And men, I am tired of the enemy, and I'm opening up some prison doors today. He said, you're going to bring the oil of joy for gladness. For those who are under depression and and they can't get out of the way of sadness and grief and, and words that people have said about them. Oh no, just take the oil of, of gladness and just pour it all over them and let it just seep into their very being. And then see what the Lord can do. But you see, liberty, I went back, I'm going back in my mind. Well, what, what did the Lord say about liberty and why are we still here and... You know, so many people have said to me, hey, if everybody had been through what you've been through, they probably wouldn't even have a church. And I'm like, well, how did we get through that? Yeah, presence. Presence and being with each other. Like, we locked arms and said, you know, Satan, you, you can try to take us down, but you're going to have to take us all down together. And he couldn't. Because if one of us was down, the other one was up. We said, we are in this thing together. You know, it was amazing that nobody came to our church for like a, a year and a half while we were healing. That like nobody except for a prophet, who I didn't know was a prophet, because you know, I'm so wise and everything. And so him and his wife came in on 441 on Wednesday night. And I was like, wow, I need to prophesy to you. So I began to prophesy to them. And then they turned around and prophesied back. I was so surprised. I'm like, whoa. What just happened? And he was one of the people who prophesied that we were set with keys to the kingdom in the city of David. Not in the city of Davy. There's more meaning to being in this town. We tried to get a little bit on the skirts of this town. Didn't work out so good. 
We got to be in Davy because that is where we are called because it is a mandate upon us to bring the presence of God for others to gather, to come in, to experience His presence so that they can go out into the highways and byways and take Him with them and spread it all around and change this city and the surrounding areas and Florida and the nations. And so He's coming. Three weeks, two weeks, three weeks. I don't know. Two, the 23rd. I found him on Facebook. I'm like, I just saw him post something and I went, hey, is this that guy? I, I'm talking about the city of David here. I'm preparing the sermon. I'm like, maybe it's this guy. Do you remember me? Did you come to 441? Oh, I'll never forget. You changed my life with your prophecy. Well, you changed mine with your prophecy. Do you ever come to Florida? Yes, I do. Well, how would you like to come to Liberty? Well, I'm not only going to come. I'm going to pay my own way. Bring my wife, my warrior prophetess wife. Ha ha. I'm like, awesome. You just come on down here. So he's coming. You know why? Because God is taking anointings that have been laying dormant and he's rekindling the fire and taking us to a new level. So if you think you feel stagnant right now, well, you better hold on because the fire is falling. We ain't waiting for Wayland Henderson. We're waiting for Jesus. He's doing it right now, people. Ryan Hampton. Mm Mm-hmm. Who are you? Who are you? What is your call? (laughs) Thank you. Say it louder. Ah, now stand up. Now say it. Now say I'm going to stand in the office of. Amen. The truth of that is going through you, Ryan. Because you're awesome in so many ways. You're awesome father. You're an awesome husband. You're an awesome employee. You're awesome to the people that you minister to on a daily basis. But you have been putting your little profit part somewhat on the shelf. And you know it. I'm not exposing you to anything you don't already know yourself. You know I love you too much for that. And it's because there's some, there's some things that have hurt you in your life. And you're just like, I'm not, listen, I'll just, I'll just be who God called me to be on the outside. I don't need all this. People have enough prophecies in their life. Oh, don't even. I know it's true. They do. And so, you know, it gets cumbersome after a while it's like well when are they going to walk in it okay well that's none of our business really okay a prophet's anointing is to release the word of the lord so it can be caught a revelation that comes from heaven that cannot be denied that it comes from the heart of god to manifest itself in that person's life That is who you really are. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the joy is found in that part of you because just like me, trying to be a pastor prophet instead of a prophet pastor leaves me a little bit empty. And so you are happy, go lucky. You're a Hamilton, what? You know, you're going to be happy. But... You're not going to be fulfilled. People are waiting on you to rise into that office. And so the Lord is anointing and re-stirring that inside of you today. He's saying, come on, son. Come on, you know what I put inside of you. Revelation. Revelation upon revelation rivers rivers that come out of you not only from your mouth but in your song and in your hands you you are called anointed and appointed by God to be just like King David who could 
write the Psalms, sing the Psalms, and be the Psalms before his God. The Lord says, that is who you are. And I'm stirring up that river so that others can jump in that flow. And the Lord says, they are coming and they're looking for the river to jump in. But you're supposed to provide the, the moving waters for them to be able to see so that they can come and see that the Lord, he is good and his mercy, which you know so well, endures forever. And the Lord says, he is pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out on you right now. He's pouring it out on you right now. Oh, fill him up to the overflow, Lord, right now, Lord. Fill up the prophetic anointing to the overflow again, Lord. Oh, Lord, let him stand before you and worship in the total fullness of his destiny, Lord. Let him affect not just a few, but hundreds and thousands, Lord, by what he has experienced in his private time with you. Lord, I call him back into the secret place. I call him back into that overflow revelation part where he releases rivers out of his mouth that all can partake of. Of. And I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for the anointing of this house on him right now. Double portion anointing, Lord. No more resisting, no more questioning, no more, no more going through your head, not through your brain, through your heart, through your spirit. Spirit man, spirit man, spirit man. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God. I thank you, my God. I thank you, my God. Oh, Jesus. Rosho Siria, Rosho Siria, Rio Brosho Siti, K. India Brosho Siti, a Protiera Saratio Protia. Oh, Rosho Siti, I did Brosso. You know that word belongs to. Edie as well, but she's probably working. Somebody's got to work around here. But they Okay. Are you guys getting this? Do you understand that there's a river right here, right now, that you can jump in? You know, you can be an observer or you can be a participator. You see, if you, if you just think, oh, well, why didn't she, you know, call on me? Why didn't she prophesy to me? No, 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 no. I'm prophesying to y'all right now. All of this anointing, all of what God is saying, it belongs to each one of you. Yeah, you can't separate what when you get in this you can't stop hearing from God you could bring a you could bring a dog in here and the dog could hear from God right now how do you think a donkey talked you get around the prophet's anointing you can hear you're all of a sudden plugs come out all of a sudden your wax drains right out of your ears and you can hear something because he's alive. He's alive and he wants to come and live on side of you and to bring that which you have let dormant come alive again. And if you haven't experienced him in that way, now is your chance because when Jesus shows up like this, oh, you just partake. You just go, okay. I asked somebody the other night, well, do you know how to pull on the anointing? They're like, I think so. This is how you pull on the anointing. I want that. I want that. I chased people around all over the world to get what they had. I'm not going to stop either. I see somebody that has something that is higher in God than what I have. I'm going to go get it because I can. I'm a child of God. If they have truth, I'm going to have the truth. If they have anointing, I'm going to have anointing. Oh. Oh, Jesus. All we need is more of him. He said, oh, well, I need, I need money. No, you don't. You need more of him. Oh, I need my marriage to be better. Oh, no. No, you don't. You need, you need more of him. You need your marriage to be okay. Okay, well, I need something broken to get fixed. Well, what you need is more of him. Well, well, I need somebody to side with me. Oh, no. What you need is more of him. Be on the Lord's side. Then he'll be on your side. He'll, he, this is how we fight our battles. We'll fight our battles like this. Oh, thank God, because I would be a terrible, well, I did punch a few people in my life, but <laughs> hey, and I did win. 
Uh, listen, I was young. Be nice. <laughs> it's my brother's fault. This, this girl was a bully. Bully! Really a bully. We were ice skating. I'm on ice skates. Can you imagine this? Ice skates. She's pushing people down, hurting people. My brother goes, my sister can take you. I go, this is the bully of the whole class. She is like a junkyard dog, man. She's going to rip me up. And he goes, no, you're going to fight her. I'm going I'm to fight her with ice skates on. Are you out of your mind? He goes, no, she's waiting for you. All right. I'm like, oh, my God, I skate over there. I'm like scared as anything, you know. And so, and everybody in the crowd, there's a whole crowd now. Oh, the kids all around from my class, you know. Oh, do I have any loyalty? Nobody's rooting for me. Janie, Janie, Janie. Nobody's going, Dawn, Dawn. No, they're going, poor Dawn. Poor Dawn, she's going down, right? I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what to do about this guy because I'm, I'm about ready to be killed and this is my brother's fault. You better get him later, you know? So anyway, I'm just like, oh, geez. So then she hit me. Oh, man. She hit the wrong person. All of this sudden out of somewhere I don't know where, okay? I just went, that actually hurts me. And I plummeted that woman until she had a black eye. Yes, that's what I said. The next day I went to school, and even though she hit me and it hurt, you couldn't tell. However, she had a black eye for everybody to see. I had respect after that. Uh, <laughs> they're like, yeah, she's, oh, don't mess with her. I'm like, that's right, don't mess with me. That is how we got to be with the devil. He comes and he goes, I'm the bully. I have won. I, I have all these battle array to, to prove my worth and to prove my strength. And so I'm taking you down. And everybody's going, you know, yeah, that's the way it is in this world. You know, we're always having problems. We're always having challenges. Nothing's ever going to Satan, 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 Satan wins. Satan wins, Satan wins, Satan wins. That's what you're doing. Until somebody stands up and goes, hey, that hurts. And they go, I'm taking you down. You think you're going to hurt the people I love? Boom. I'm going to hit you with the word. I'm going to hit you with the goodness of God. I'm going to hit you with the truth. You are going down and you are staying down. If you come after me again, I'm going to knock you down again. Oh, she was mad. So she went to the principal and she said, I was cheating on a test because you know back in those days they used to paddle you big wooden paddle man you didn't want to be called into the principal's office and so I went in there and the principal goes yeah Janie said you're cheating on the history test and I go I was <laughs> and he goes what I go yeah yeah listen my best friend sits behind me she has all the answers I hate the history now I wish I would have paid attention but you know what I'm saying oh Okay, which one of you never cheated? Raise your hand right now. You never cheated? You never cheated, Janice Champagne? Thank you. Oh, same thing. Okay. So I said, well, you know, you saw me. I mean, like, he let me do it. And he goes, all right, here's what's going to happen. He goes, I'm going to hit the side of the desk. And you're going to cry loud. And they're going to think I'm hitting you. And then we're going to be done with this. I'm like, favor. <laughs> I have favor. That was, that was like mercy of the Lord, you know. So I like screamed. And he hit the side of the desk. We were done. Everybody thought, oh, yeah, justice has occurred. But you see, when you're standing in front of the just judge. And you ain't lying about what you did. Mercy triumphs over judgment well these are good words right here mm -hmm. I deserve to get that paddle Ooh, I didn't want though but instead I experienced mercy the same way I did at the foot of the cross 
the same way you did at the foot of the cross unless you haven't made your way there yet. You see, God has a purpose and a destiny on everybody sitting here. I don't have time to prophesy to all of you today. But I could. And what I am saying is just as important to the one sitting beside you as somebody who got a one-on-one -on -one word. Because if you, can, if you can have ears to hear and you can have eyes to see, then you can be partakers of what God is reestablishing. Now, I knew, okay, what did he tell us? Okay. Well, say it louder than that. Okay. When the Lord said that, I kind of shook a little. Because here's what it means. Get all in or you're all out. And I went, oh my goodness. I, now I have to lead these people to be all, all in. How you, how, how, how do you do that? Because in my own strength, I don't know how to do that. Except for right now, I know how to do that. You are champions. You are more than conquerors. Been, been preaching to you all. If you just go listen to all the sermons from the beginning of the year, it'll change your life. If you apply it to your life, it will. Because I don't get these things just by... I get it from God. It's for you guys. It's for you. That's why we have a church. It's, we get revelation and then we do something about the revelation. We don't just come here to eat. We come here to eat, get fed, and then go feed. And so... But here's what I know. God is awakening and reestablishing this church back to who he has said it is. This church is here on purpose. It is in Davie because we are going to become the center of God's heart and release his presence so that others can partake and their lives can be changed, period. It's what we've always done. But it's not just for us to partake of, it's for us to pass on. Say it's for us to pass on. He said the words that I put in your mouth, I'm going to put in your seed's mouth and your seed's, seed's, seed's mouth, generation to generation, now and forever. So what does that mean? It means that we are never going to be something that we are not we're going to be exactly what God called us to be a prophetic church established on the written word of God who does not apologize for the works of the spirit but calls people into his presence so they can be established in him and they can be overcomers in their own realm of responsibility I hope Jane got that one you know, they had, they had whatever that stuff is that you do. On Facebook the other day, I recognized what it was. Can't read it, though. But anyway, she, did, she takes shorthand. Thank God. In, in this church, I, I'm talking about liberty. This is a church established by God. Like, I am not diminishing any other church, so get me right. If you're called to another church, that's fine. You can be called to another church. I, I, oh, here's, I cannot stand it when people put down any other church, or especially if they call somebody by name and say they're doing it wrong. Forget it. We're all part of the body. We're all part of the body. We love Jesus. If we love Jesus, they love Jesus. We're on the same team, people. We're on the same team. So. I, I'm never going to diminish anybody else. But here's what I am trying to establish. This is what God called us to do. I don't know what they called the guy down the street to do. There's like plenty of churches. I don't know what their call is. I just know what our call is. Our call is to spend time in his presence until we get a revelation of who he is. And then we share that revelation with somebody else. Listen, you can, okay. 
God wants us to be givers. Thank you, Leslie. For, that's so good that you're doing that. Um, he wants us to be givers into his kingdom. And that comes in all different forms. It comes by, by giving your um, tithes and your offerings. That's true. It's a part of the body of Christ. If you don't give your tithes, then, then you're voting that we close the door. 10% of your income belongs to this church if this is your church. Period. End of story. If you're not doing that, you're voting we close. That, that's the truth. So, But I'm not after your money. I'm after you getting what you need in your household so that you don't run out. You've got holes in your bags if you ain't tithing. So, you know, people go, well, you know, she's talking about money. Everybody gets all nervous. She, she's talking about giving funds. I am going to talk about giving funds because I had to apologize to God because I'm not teaching you enough on the establishment of the Word of God that says you have to tithe, and that means 10%. And so he wasn't apologetic about it. So I'm not going to apologize for it either. You need to do your part, people. I dared to look at the tithing records the other day. Dear God in heaven. Tip God. See what you get. He says, even past the 10% is where the offerings open up the windows so you can... He'll pour out a blessing that you can't even contain. You want, you want to have abundance? Well, I don't have enough money. I don't have money. What are you doing with your money you have? Well, I don't have any money. Well, then give your button. Give your pen. Give your, what was it, a pencil, Kenneth Copeland? He sewed a pencil. And God gave him $10. He gave the $10 back to God. You know why? Because God was establishing a principle in him. He was saying, give and it shall be given. All right, I'm off on that tangent. Sometimes when you get a revelation from God, the revelation is so that you can go do something for somebody. It's true. You got to have a heart for people. You got to do something for a person. But I will tell you what else it does. It establishes something inside of you that has a need to sit by the person beside you and to care for the person beside them and to care for the person beside them because we are a body of Christ and we are put in Davie, Florida on purpose. And if you neglect the gathering of the saints together in this house, then you cannot go out there and be victorious because God established a gathering. They gathered together daily and they continued and if you don't gather you don't continue wow okay well I, this is what God's saying you want your life to be hunky dory then you better be hunky dory right inside these walls you better come and get established in the word you better listen and apply this to your life you got to do something different if you want to be different. So, I, I realized that during the worst parts of our life at Liberty, and you all know what that is, well, most of you do, so our pastor and my husband of 32 years left. Me and the whole church. Oh, that was fun. I couldn't even breathe. And God said, well, now you have to take the church. I'm like, I can't breathe. I said, I know you think I'm strong and all that, but seriously, what, how strong do you think I am? And he goes, strong enough. In his strength. And he said, who's going to take care of those sheep if you don't? You're the reason why I continue. I didn't continue for me. Because I would just as much have been left in a corner, in a heap. Because that's how I felt. Anytime I wasn't under the anointing. But I said, no, no. This church, these people, these eyeballs... To eyeballs, these ones that I love, those little people. Oh, they're not going to go without a pastor. Mm -mm. The ones that God has coming to liberty to establish them, they're going to have a pastor. 
They're going to have a church to come to. They're going to have the word of God. They're going to have revelation. They're going to have the spirit of God. They're going to have the presence of God. I'm going to build myself a tabernacle of habitation, and I'm going to invite other people to it because I am establishing a church that's going to be like the tabernacle of David. And so the word of the Lord kept coming alive. I mean, maybe I was a little pent up, but we used to have church till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and nobody cared. They weren't going, "Mm." time to eat, you know, really. I've tasted and seen that the Lord, he is good. (laughs) When I'm done preaching, I'll be hungry, but I ain't hungry right now. Because when you are with him, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And that's what we're called to do. Each one of you has a call and an anointing to make that happen for other people. You see, there is, there is something about being in his presence and getting his love that sets you on fire, that makes you love other people, that sets them on fire. Okay, I'm going to close with this. So I went to youth service on Friday night. We had 27 youth. Say 27 youth. Ella. Okay. Oh, when Stephen Janice got the call from God, I think they had four. How many did you have? Six. Sorry, six. But now something's happening. And, and, you know, 27 is a lot, but not a lot. I mean, because, you know, we want 27,000 to be saved, healed, delivered, and set free in that generation. And so, but, but here is what God was showing me. These kids come and they don't even know what's happening in the atmosphere. Like, they come and... They make time for them at the end to experience God every time, every time. And so Steve gets up and he gives them an altar call and nobody really responded. And so I'm like, oh, good. Let's see what Steve does with this, you know. And so he goes, you, come up here. And like, they are not going to say no to Mr. Steve. (laughs) Have you seen Mr. Steve? And he's got those like, electrified eyeballs like he's like I will if you don't come up here I'm going to get a hook and I'm going to pull you right up here you know so so they're like Ugh. and they come up and they're scared right they're scared and and he goes put your hands out like this and so they put their hands out one, one at a time I'm talking he called them out one at a time because they're stubborn Ooh. and so so then he's like speaking into their life and stuff. And you're like, that is so cool. And they're like receiving from the Lord. And they're like embarrassed that they're receiving from the Lord, but they're still receiving from the Lord. And then this kid comes to me afterward, that friend of Ryan and, and Reves, and he's not here, right? And, and he comes to me and he goes, uh, well, actually, Reve R- R- goes, tell my Nana. Tell my Nana. What just happened? And he goes, you can't believe what happened to me. And I go, what happened? And he goes, I have my hands out like this, and I'm talking to God. And all of a sudden, I felt, I felt this. I felt like someone came and cupped my fingers like this. And I opened my eyes to see if Mr. Steve was standing there. I thought for sure it was him. And I opened my eyes, and it wasn't him. It was God. And he goes, I've never experienced anything like that before. That was the coolest thing that ever happened to me in my life. And I said, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Kids that don't even really know gospel songs, singing gospel songs on the way home, in the car. Because he got excited about the joy of the Lord. That's why we're here person who who was working in an office actually got she was going home she got in her car God said go back in 
Invite that lady to church. She comes to church. Why do we have a church? Oh, I don't know. So Funda could come and sit in the church who was a Muslim or thought she was. Until she sat here and cried through every service. And then she came to me and she goes, uh, uh, I don't think I'm Muslim anymore. I'm like, uh, you're not. And she goes, I-, I believe in Jesus. I go, of course you do. That's why you've been here every Sunday crying. Because he's making himself real to you. She didn't even come down to the altar and say, oh, please pray for me so I could say the sinner's prayer. She just recognized who is the highest God. That's why we're here. People who care for one another, people who invite people into their homes, people who have paid for other people's meals, people who have paid for other people's tires, people who have taken care of going to the hospital, people who have prayed for people and they received a miracle, that's why we're here. People who come and get happy. (laughs) Somebody gave a testimony the other day, not here present, but um, they said, I came in and I received Jesus. I've never been so damn happy. (laughs) Well, it's true. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. This is, that's the raw truth right there. Uh, So, that's why we're here. We're not here for all the saints, you know. We're here for real people. That's why God has established us and that's why he's reestablishing us. So, this basically has almost nothing to do with what I wrote. But the Lord, He is good. (laughs) He is our rock. Amen. Okay. Our, oh wait, I think I do have to prophesy to you. Okay. Yeah, don't turn around, Steve, it's you. You and Janice, stand up. So one of the missing elements in the body of Christ has been somebody willing to pay the price to be spiritual mothers and fathers. Everybody wants to talk about it, but nobody wants to haul that stuff four million times so that they can go just to be in the presence of God and know who he is more. Nobody wants their ankles to swell from all the work, lose sleep, be so tired you wish you were dead you know just take me home be in your presence you know but the driving force behind what God has placed inside of you is a bunch of faces a bunch of faces that are needy they need to know the truth they need God to set them free they need God to heal them in so many areas and so you force yourself into obedience not because it feels good not because you want a title but because you caught something here I didn't just teach you or talk you into this I did suggest it as we all know because I saw the call of God on your life I waited patiently until the Lord revealed it but you were the guys that had to step into it and when you did There is a mantle that God placed upon you so that you could lead these youth into a different place so that you could show them what worshiping him unashamedly would be. So that you could say, oh no, children, gather together. We are going to church. This is our church. This is what we do. This is where we go. And they're all up there on that stage, whether they like it or not. And they will like it. And they will be established because you're establishing them. But you're not just establishing your own, for God has put inside of you all those faces. And you know we've dreamed together. We have talked this out so many times, but today the Lord wants you to know that he's saying, well done, good and faithful. Lives are being changed and they're gonna they're gonna lead, they're not just gonna follow. They're gonna rise into their positions because they finally can connect 
with somebody who's connected to God. It's not because of me. Well, you're because of me, but it's because of you and your obedience. And those are the diamonds on the water. That it comes and then you carry it on and then they carry it on and then they carry it on. And the generations get established. And the Lord says, thanks for carrying my heart to the next generation. They mean so much to me. When God established liberty, he said, focus on the children, number one. Him, then the children. Because without the children, we lose generations. So he wanted to acknowledge you today as spiritual father, spiritual mother. In Jesus' name, amen. So Father, we just thank you for this. We thank you for obedience, Lord. We thank you for a double portion of anointing. We thank you for releasing, God, them into new levels of understanding in the spirit realm. And God, that when they are with those kids, the synergy of heaven happens. Lord, I thank you that you're taking them and all of those youth to a new level of heaven on earth. And we thank you for establishing that and reestablishing it today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I love you. Okay, let's take up the offering. I don't need to say a thing about that now, do I? Um, I'm teaching on Wednesday night. It says that I'm teaching on the power of thinking with a positive edge, but I don't know why I'm going to be teaching. So I'll be teaching something. And um, I just love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Good, I'm glad to hear it. Okay, June 10th, I have to say this because we won't have any other time to announce it, is that Susan Dudley is having a um, Laugh Out Loud pool party. So all the women of this church are invited on Sunday um, from 1 to 4, right after church. We're going to her house and having a Hawaiian-style pool party. So if you don't know people and you'd like to get to know people better, better then this is a, a way for you to do it. It's going to be fun. We're going to kick back and enjoy. And if you don't want to put on your bathing suit and get in the water, that's okay, too, because, you know, we're all women. But we don't care, you know, whether you get in or whether you don't. We just love you. It is next Sunday. That's why I had to do it. And so, um, and then the Monday after that, our youth are leaving. And they did a garage sale yesterday to all of those who helped. Thank you so much, whether you donated or helped at the thing. They made... Over $2,000! <laughs> yeah. And so, woo, all of that is going. And I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're going to go. They're going to be a part of an amazing thousands of young people worshiping God, learning the word, um, applying it to their life. Then they're leaving there. They're going to Abundant Life. They're going to get in on their youth thing. And then they're going to come back here. And when they come back, they are doing the entire service. Because we're not just raising up little punks. We're raising up leaders here. <laughs> leaders. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where I get this stuff. If I've offended you in any way today, I apologize in advance and ask that you forgive me for whatever I've said that didn't sit right with you. And uh, God will be my judge. Okay. And so I do have to stand before him someday and answer for all these words. God help me. All right. I love you. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you better be given to God. Okay, wait on the people. <laughs> you, want the, you want God's best? Give him your best. That's what I got to say about that. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I receive the words of the Lord. And my life has changed today, right here. Right now, as I sow my seed of time, talent, energy, and finances, I am blessed beyond measure because God is establishing his covenant on this earth through me.
to me and to others. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay. Hmm. Okay, if anybody wants to repent of anything, I will be at the front and I'll help you repent because I don't feel like giving an altar call. I just feel like you got it, right? Square. Which, the truth, right? But maybe you need prayer for something. And so I never want to make you feel like I'm rushing anything so that you don't get what you need. If you need ministered to, I am your minister. So I will minister to you. If I need help, I'll get help. And so um, if you need anything, then you just come after and I'll pray for you. I don't want anybody ever leaving here thinking that I bypassed them. So, um, you know, I love you. Yeah. But who do we love the most? Jesus. And who loves us the most? Jesus. And who loves all of his people the most? Jesus. Amen. He came to set the captives free. Amen. I'm just going to join him and keep joining him. Amen and amen. All right, I'll be here if you need prayer. And other than that, then you are dismissed. And don't run over the lake. <laughs> if you would like to support this ministry with a financial contribution, visit our website at www.LibertyLifeCenter.org. Find the link to the left that says Donate Now and follow the instructions there. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing worldwide through this ministry.